Hi everyone! Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have a new painting that I am very happy to share with you. It was inspired by my newfound love for wine. And even if you are not a wine drinker or even a drinker yourself, I hope you guys enjoy uh, seeing how this painting comes together in the end. So as I like to start out my painting endeavors, I started out by sketching out the um, idea in my sketchbook. Now I didn't film this part of the process because I really just wanted to enjoy this sacred sketching time and um, what I had in my mind going into it, I knew I wanted uh, this little mini me character i still don't have a name for her yet but this character with glasses i knew i want her sitting in an armchair with a glass of wine in her hand and basically everything else i built up around that idea i think for this idea i wanted to go with a more relaxed more kind of cozy kind of feeling so with that in mind i drew some of these thumbnail comps the second one i felt like i hit the note the most i got the kind of cozy living room kind of vibe from it so um that is the one i ended up going with and having settled on the cozy living room idea i tried to refine the drawing a little bit more trying to nail down the pose of the cat and as well the pose and expression of the girl i drew her several times to get just the right expression that i was looking for and here is the finalized drawing that I did in Photoshop. As you can see, I ended up being really, really happy with this drawing, which is kind of rare for me. I usually feel like my final drawings end up being a little bit stiffer and not as interesting as some of my sketches, but I felt like I had really improved on the sketches. So I was really happy with that and I felt ready to um, go on to the next stage in the planning, which was doing the value and color comps. Now. This is where I kind of got a little bit lazy and a little bit overconfident because I only did two of each and they are basically identical to one another. So I did not do much exploration. I felt like I had a clear idea of what I wanted in my head. So I felt confident enough just going into the painting without dwelling too much in this uh, part of the planning stage. So without further ado, here is me starting to work on the painting. Thankfully, I have the footage to show you from this point on. And I feel like I can now begin to talk a little bit more about the story, I guess, behind the idea for this piece. So I was never a big uh, wine drinker. I was, I'm not even a big drinker in general, actually. Um, I will enjoy the occasional drink um when i'm at a social event just honestly mostly out of obligation and that's kind of how i felt about wine it's not something i ever really seeked out on my own but something that just felt like as an adult is something you just do but over these past few months something changed there has been a shift and now I really appreciate wine. And drinking wine um, at the end of my day has become sort of this signal where, ah, now I can relax. Now this is the end of my working day. Now I can sit back and relax and unwind haha, <laughs> and just enjoy the night. And I can't pinpoint exactly when the shift happened, but my partner and I, we have been uh, drinking wine maybe every other day um, with our meals. And um, that has become this kind of ritual. And at first, to me, it did feel like an obligation. My partner is the one that was more into wine and he would pick out uh, the right type of wines for the meal that we're having and I really just saw it as this unnecessary expense and unnecessary um, calories that I had to consume uh, just because it's just something that people do 
But somewhere along the way, I started to develop a taste for it, and I started to miss it when we would have dinner and there wasn't any wine. And so for me, wine, um, especially red, I I prefer the reds. I like whites and I appreciate whites with uh, seafood and just lighter meals. But um, taste-wise, I really prefer the red. And this has become a little bit of a daily ritual for me, where it's synonymous with the end of the working day and it's time to relax and unwind. And now there's just something so comforting about it, and it gives me the warm and fuzzy feelings. I feel like when I enjoy a glass of wine, time kind of slows down, and yeah, I let time slow down. You know, I, I let myself just be and、um, watch time go by, and it, it, it's okay. It, you know, I don't have to be. On and in that working mode all the time. It's it's now time to rest. So that was the inspiration behind this piece. I really wanted to convey that relaxed kind of mood, and I wanted the character to look so calm and content as she is enjoying this glass of wine, stretched out on the armchair at the end of a hard working day. So as I mentioned before, I felt pretty confident going into this piece, and so I started to go into the rendering stage pretty early on, and I、uh, rendered out the character and the chair, and I felt like things were looking pretty good. But this is where the whole not、um, having spent too much time in the planning stage comes and bites me in the butt because I didn't know how to treat the background. I wanted the girl's face and the wine glass to have a glow around it, and so I knew I needed to make the background darker in order for those to、uh, stand out and、uh, have something to contrast against. So with that in mind, I go ahead and darken the background value. But the thing is, I ended up going a little bit overboard and. I just kept on layering and layering more paint on top to the point where the colors that I had in the background they became quite muddy looking in the end, and it just got to a point where I had laid so much、uh, pigment over top I just couldn't get the saturation back. Looking over my footage, I just I'm like kicking myself. Why didn't I stop? Layering、uh, paint on because it looks good fairly early on. I don't know why I felt the need to make it darker and darker because it didn't need to be quite so dark to convey the idea that it's a dark living room. But yeah, I just kept on going darker and darker, and therefore I felt like it resulted in a very muddied look. And actually, the foreground elements, because I had worked on them first, and because I was so confident, and I went into the rendering process so、uh, quickly and heavily,、um, they were kind of dark too, and so it kind of all blended in with the background instead of standing out, which is what I had intended. So I tried to lift up some of the color with just a wet paintbrush, but It didn't really work. It would seem like it was lifting, but then when it dried, it kind of dried back to the original state. And so, my solution to this problem was to go back to the foreground elements and really just、uh, make them pop through the rendering. So I just went on super heavy with the rendering, even more so than the、uh, first few. Passes, and I'm not sure that that is the look that I was going for for this piece, but that's just how it ended up. I needed to go in with the heavy rendering to、uh, make the foreground elements stand out from the background that I had overworked. I think in hindsight, I could have treated、uh, the background with a little bit more nuance.、Um, I I don't know why I just got in my head that I needed to go dark so quickly. Because looking back at the earlier parts in the footage, it conveyed that it's dark, but it wasn't actually literally dark. You know what I mean? And so I wish I could have stopped myself earlier on because I really liked some of the color 
uh, gradients that I was getting in the background. Now that the value is much darker, I felt like I had lost that. And so I uh, make a lot of attempts to bring back some of the color throughout the painting. And at this point, I was actually quite frustrated with a lot of the elements in the painting. Um, I didn't like how I was rendering the grapes and the little rug and the potato chip bag. And um, I don't know, sometimes I have a really hard time with watercolor, especially if I'm trying to get it to a uh, pretty dark value. Um, I find the more watercolor I layer, the less um, appealing it looks and the darker value I work in in watercolor, it just looks not as good. I don't know why, but it, it just doesn't and sometimes I think I just don't use watercolor to its uh, highest potential because I layer so much and it's as if I am trying to work with it opaquely like it's gouache but maybe I just work better in an opaque medium and maybe my tendency is work as if I were working in an opaque medium. I don't know but um, I feel like more opaque mediums like gouache when you lay down a stroke especially if it's a drier mixture then it stays put and you can rely on it to stay put where you left it but because watercolor isn't like that um, it forces me to keep layering on and layering on until it just gets to a point where the value it becomes so dark and it got to a point where i realized there's nothing I can do at this point with more watercolor. I think I have to go in with some gouache to be able to layer over top of it. And so that's what I did. At this point is where uh, this piece basically became a mixed media piece because I started to use gouache and some watercolor um, interchangeably. I painted over the rug in gouache and it was so much easier for my brain to think of it this way where um, there's a darker value as a base and I'm just layering over a lighter value over top as opposed to with watercolor where I was trying to carve out each of the individual little shadow shapes um, out of the rug. And overall in the painting where I had gotten a little bit too dark, um, I was able to go in with gouache and give some of those areas their color back and also lighten up a few areas. And even though I lamented a bit about having gone a little bit too dark with this piece and having lost a lot of the color that I had initially achieved, um, I don't really mind this darker look. And in fact, I feel like it kind of gives it an edginess to it. And I feel like it especially makes the Felix uh, cat clock makes sense and also the kitschy like porcelain uh, cat figurines on the mantle it also makes them feel a little bit edgier too and so I didn't in the end I really didn't mind this darker look and I felt like this new kind of darker direction of this piece gave it a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a creepy kind of vibe, almost Halloween-y kind of vibe, which I totally am okay with. So in the end, I stopped beating myself up over my past mistakes and I learned to just love and enjoy the process and have fun with it again. And at this point in the painting, I felt like throwing in some special effects could really tie the piece together and bring more visual interest to the piece as well as embodying the tone that I wanted to set with the piece. You know, how does this wine make me feel? There's a difference between how a glass of wine makes me feel as opposed to a cup of coffee or maybe even an energy drink. There's a different energy there. It's not like this jolt of sensations. I imagine it more to be slow moving and blooming over time. So I couldn't portray this kind of energy with straight lines that are radiating from the glass. I feel like that would have been a little bit too 
obvious slash not suitable. I want the audience to feel when she is enjoying a glass of wine that it is a calming experience. It is meant to be enjoyed slowly. And so that's why I felt that curved lines were appropriate for this picture and I'm not sure um, if everyone knows what I mean when I say like special effects but um, I often feel like in my paintings uh, there comes a point where I have to throw these things in to emphasize my point that I'm trying to make with the picture and sometimes that means bringing more of the abstract and graphic elements like these random lines to manipulate um, where I want my audience's eyes to go. And speaking of these random graphic lines, um, here at this point in the painting, I felt like I was pretty much finished, but there was still something missing and I decided to draw more of these um, in that really echoed the experience of taking a sip of wine. This line curves um, in a circle basically and um, I portrayed it as like a segmented line and I don't know why but instead of like one continuous line I decided to break up the lines because to me breaking up the lines each of the little segments kind of portrayed like a pulsating effect and when you drink wine if it's complex in its flavors it's not like this linear experience where you take a sip and it's this like steady incline up to the climax and then bam you're done it's more nuanced than that. It blooms and then it fades and then it blooms again and then it fades. And it's this long drawn out experience if the wine is good. So despite my early frustrations with this piece, I really do love how it ended up turning out. I already feel like this piece feels very endearing to me. I guess because it is pretty personal, even though I don't personally own a cute little calico cat and I don't own a Felix Kit Kat clock, the idea behind it is very personal and it kind of symbolizes my shifting values. Like it says on the bottle, I really feel like it's important to find little joys, little moments in life and just relish in them and derive happiness from them. And I honestly believe that this sort of ritual of having a glass of wine at the end of the day has taught me to slow down and appreciate the little things in life. So that is it for the painting. I hope you guys enjoyed watching how this piece came together. If you find this relatable in any way, and even if you don't drink wine or don't drink at all, I would love to know if you find this relatable. And if so, let me know how you like to wind down at the end of the day. And Wine O'Clock is available as a limited print on my online shop. They are limited to 100 prints and I'm only making them available in this smaller size because I feel that it is more of an intimate piece and so it works better in this scale. And so if you like how this piece turned out and you like what I do here on YouTube and on Instagram and you would like to support me, then grabbing a print or just checking out the online shop in general is a great way to help support me in continuing to do what I do. By the way, the drawing of this piece is actually available as a coloring page over on my Patreon. And speaking of patrons, I of course want to thank my patrons for making this video possible. My patrons know that I've been really trying to get into a schedule with my YouTube videos as well as my painting releases and they've been incredibly supportive and it really keeps me going through the harder times. If anyone else would like to join us over on Patreon, then you are more than welcome. I am really trying to make an effort to grow it because I see it as a really positive thing for independent artists like me so do come and check it out sometime 
I really hope you guys like this little girl and her chonky calico cat because you'll definitely be seeing more of them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!